G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. So today I've got a really quick and easy, very delicious little project for us all to make. It's a little scissor keep, can be for anything at all actually, any little tools. Um, this one I designed many years ago and I had so many requests for it over the years and I thought I finally need to get around to putting that into a pattern. Now, it's a really, really quick project and it's very simple and it's great for beginners. So if you're just starting, this one's for you. Simple little closure there and you can tuck in, I've got my little forceps in there and you can put scissors, forceps, any little tools that you like. What a great little project for uh, building up a stash of little gifts. So you just need your free pattern and I have that ready for you and that is in the description box below. You will need to open up that description box and you'll find that link and I will put it number one in the comments as well so that's easy for you all. When you go to print your pattern templates out, just make sure that you set your printer to be printing at actual size so that all of these little pattern pieces fit beautifully. So let's get busy. Right, so let's start with what we need to make up our little scissor case. Now, before we begin, you can increase or decrease this pattern if you like to accommodate your different size scissors or tools. I'm probably going to be keeping my forceps in mind so you can see you can really put anything in there. It's made at the moment for a pair of scissors about this size um, but certainly if you want to accommodate larger shears you can just, just make sure you increase the whole pattern. Um, now what we're making this with is I've cut out my front and my back pieces. This is my front pocket out of uh, felt fabric, what I call felt fabric, which is a piece of felt fused together to just a cotton print fabric using fusible webbing. Now I actually have a video that shows you how I put felt fabric together. I'm going to put the link up the top there for you so you can have a look at that. But I usually just fuse those two pieces together and then I cut my shapes from that. So you've got your front and your back. Now I'm using it with the print on the outside of the case. You could reverse it and have your print on the inside of the case so when, so when you open up that flap you've got that little pop of colour. You might want to just use felt because you can add um, just a natural colour like a cone perhaps and do some uh, diagonal stitching to show that sort of waffle effect. But on this one I actually really like having that really decorative uh, front there. And I guess it depends on what you're doing with your top section. So this is it's a very simple design as you can see. So uh, fastening to close our little cover, I'm just using regular Velcro hook and loop. And I've got them cut to four centimetres, those pieces. And they will be applied there and there. And that is our little closing. You could use um, a little magnetic closing if you like, or maybe a press stud, that's entirely up to you. So our next pieces that we need are our ice cream top pieces and they are both cut from felt with our fusible woven cotton interfacing on the back. We're also going to need a filler for that section just to give it a bit of body so that when we're opening and closing that it's got some strength to it. I'm using actual stiffened felt. If you can't find stiffened felt you can just use another piece of just interfaced felt just to give it a little bit of body. We're also going to need something for our topping. I'm just doing a regular chocolate topping there and that one just has fusible webbing applied cut from felt and also the same with your little cherry which is going to be pressed into place there. You will need a little stalk for your cherry and I actually just use a little piece of hat elastic and what I've done there with that one I've actually dipped the end previous in some just PVA white glue and I've let that dry and so now that end won't fray away and it's got it's very stable there and we will just be incorporating that into the uh, seam there. So we've got that one ready and then you can decorate your little ice cream section with anything that you like. Now I've got an assortment of little buttons that match my project and you can see there, I know that they look quite large for, for little sprinkles, but they come up really beautiful. And you could use little beads if you wanted. Um, it's really so many little, so many little notions that you could use. 
and I will just have those scattered on there as you can see you could also add some sprinkle tight beads some seed beads to the top if you wish and we'll need a little bit of clear craft glue and we're going to be needing some different threads I'm using pearl threads to do my blanket stitching on this one we're sewing the main body part on the machine but then we're going to be doing some hand stitching and I've also got my extra strong thread in in the bright red there which will be very handy so our first step with this one is we want to create a nice secure top edge this is the top edge of our pocket where we're going to be tucking things in so what I like to do is I like to sew a blanket stitch across that top edge now alternatively you could just take it to the machine and you could sew a very close satin stitch zigzag across there in a coordinating color and that just seals that edge and it means we won't get any fraying when we're taking things in and out I'm actually just going to sew a blanket stitch so I'm going to come in from behind I'm just using my pearl thread here I'm going to start close to the edge but not right on the edge because we're going to be sewing a seam there so I've just come in from behind I've got a knot in the end you can just hide that knot behind if you want to sink that knot you can just enlarge that little hole in the felt just to create a little pocket for that knot to pop into and that has my knot hidden and I'm going to start my blanket stitch so I'm just going to keep my stitches quite small so a blanket stitch is just taking your needle through right through both layers and coming out through the loop each time now if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I'll, I'll pop a link up the top there for you to a video where I show you how to do that you can see I'm going through that uh, fabric there and coming through the loop each time with my needle I'm holding that thread nice and taut with my finger behind there and you can see I'm just going to create a nice binding stitch that will travel across the top there so there you can see that finished little line of stitching and it's bound that edge really beautifully that's a five ply pearl thread I've used there and it's a nice weight to give that a nice finish on that edge now you can see I've gone ahead there and now I've just added my little velcro pieces now I've, you can see I've set them about a quarter of an inch from the edge um, and make sure they're nicely centered and that they will line up for when we make that closing and like I said mine was adhesive so I just pressed them into place and then stitched around each of those so our next step from there is as simple as lining up that bottom pocket there and we're going to stitch we're actually going to stitch that little pocket in place with a very small four millimeter seam allowance right the way around make sure you're back and forth here and here because this is our stress point here and here but I'm going to continue right the way around with a top stitch that links it all up so that this section here has a top stitch now our little ice cream topping is going to go over the top of that so we won't actually see that edge um, and we will be adding if you wish a blanket stitch around this section so I'm going to get this little one stitching into place remember that four millimeter seam allowance and you can see there that has my little case all stitched together now so basically you could leave this section as it is now I've definitely made phone cases before this double felt this sorry this felt fabric is an absolute delight to work with because you can see it's got that lovely substance to it um, and also we've only got that one raw edge there of that fabric but it is bonded to the felt so we really don't get any frame but I do like to add that little blanket stitch all the way around that lower edge there now I do love hand sewing now if you don't that's absolutely fine you can leave that but it's something that I've always enjoyed and um, I, I do confess that when I first started making videos I was always very concerned about my my very old looking hands my my hands are very uh, sort of worn they're working hands and uh, I was a little bit nervous about showing them I see so many 
ladies and and they have such lovely hands and but I got used to it <laughs> I did get used to seeing them and now I am at a point where I remember I remember an old saying but if you had regular hands you'd be like everybody else so I've I've grown to love and accept my hands for what they can do not what they look like so I'm going to start here you can see I've just tucked that little knot in there I'm using a, an eight, eight ply pearl thread this time a little variegated pinks and very deep red so and I'm just going to start there now the good thing about us sewing that little stitch first to join those pieces together now we've got a lovely guideline for our blanket stitch so you can see there I'm just going to follow that line all the way around I don't have to worry about the depth of my stitch because because it's already marked in and you'll find you'll be able to knock that one off really quickly so again it's just through both layers check out that video if that helps you and pulling that through the loop each time and it just not only will it decorate that edge it also gives it just that little bit more strength with that binding so I'm going to work right the way around that lower edge and there we go you can see that little edge all stitched you can see what a lovely finish that is and now it's really quite stable and strong there so our next step is we're going to add the back of our little ice cream section on this flap so this is going to be the back it will fold over our little pieces are going to be finally in the end stitched together on that flap there but this is the back section and we want to be able to add this now so that we're not having any ugly stitching showing when we open that flap when we open up that flap we just want to see and nicely stitched a little fastening there and that's all so you can see that what I've done is I've put right sides together of the felt and my little back flap there and you can see that it's just sitting again around about a quarter of an inch on these sections and make sure that it's nicely centered so do turn it over and have a look and check that once you secure that that your little overlap is right and it's nicely centered once you have that right you can go ahead now you can glue it with a bit of clear craft glue first if you like just to hold it into place just a little bit on this back section here and glue that down and then we just want to stitch just over that same line of stitching that we did before and just up until this point here so on right the way around and up to this side and that's going to hold that little ice cream panel in place so I'm going to go ahead and get that one stitched in and now I have that little piece stitched in place and I've still kept it all nice and pretty on the underside of that flap you can see as I fold that one over now the next thing I've gone ahead and done is just taken my clear craft glue again and I have glued my little filler that is my stiffened felt perhaps you're using just another piece of interfaced felt and I have glued that one into place that can sit there nice and flat press that one into place and we're going to let that one dry while we go ahead and start the front of our little ice cream detail so we take our next piece we remove our backing paper from our little chocolate top or whatever color you're using now we're going to sandwich our little uh, stalk our cherry stalk in between the layers here so you want to cut your cherry stalk you can cut it as long or as short as you like what we're going to do is we're going to include that one in as we fuse this little layer on make sure that you've got everything lined up and you'll need a hot iron and a protective cloth so we'll fuse that one in place and that little stalk will be caught up in that little section there and then we're going to also add our little cherry on top and you can see that your little stalk will just extend from there so we'll get those pressed into place ready for some stitching and now that I have those all pressed nicely in place you can see my little stalk is caught up there I'm now going to start my stitching so I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch just along this edge here 
We're going to be sewing around the entire outside edge with a blanket stitch so we only need to do this lower edge here and you could do this on the machine with a probably a close zigzag stitch. Um, I like to keep it um, you know running through with the same stitch all the way through on this little project and it doesn't take very long. So I'm starting close to the edge here. I've come through, I'm using my pearl thread again and I'm just going to, I've tied a knot in the back so that knot is held at the back. I've gone through right on the edge there, coming out right on the edge and I've gone through both of those fabrics. Now it's the same concept as a blanket stitch, only we're just, we're following that little edge line there. We're still coming through that loop. I'm going to put a video link up the top there for you that shows you how to sew a blanket applique stitch and I'm actually keeping to the same colour there you can see as my little chocolate topping to really line that out but of course you could contrast it if you really want that line of stitching to show up. It just depends on what colours you're using for your project. So you can see I've come out on that edge again and that's just going to bind that edge and just give it a lovely finish. And this one is an eight ply again, this pearl thread, but you can use uh, embroidery cotton if you like. I would probably use two strands if you're using embroidery thread. You can see I've just started in from the edge there because I don't want to be going over another layer of stitching when I do my final blanket stitching. So I'm gonna continue along that edge and then I'm going to do the same thing just on the lower edge and I'll be using my red to just outline the base of that cherry. Okay, so you can see there that I have finished my blanket applique stitching on those little edges there, those two lower edges. And I've gone ahead and sewn on all of my little buttons. You might be adding beads or some other kind of embellishment there. Um, and we do it all now because then we can hide all of those knots behind and uh, make sure that you don't get too close to the edges with anything that you're putting there. Leave room for our blanket stitch which is going around the entire outside. So our next step is just to glue that front one onto our panel here. So I've got that one all glued up and ready. Make sure you get all of those edges there with your clear craft glue and then it's just a matter of lining that one up making sure that all of your edges meet, pressing that one down into place. You can put clips all around if you like while it's drying. Get those edges all met up, press it down nice and flat and we will leave that one to dry completely, probably a good 20 minutes. Now once your, uh, your little front section is dry there, we can just go ahead now and what we're going to do is just sew a blanket stitch around the entire outside edge of that little fold over flap. You can see I'm using my cream there and I'm starting on my cream section and I'm just going to make my way around that entire section. Then I will cast off, change over to my chocolate brown and stitch this section here and then finish off with my, just with my variegated, variegated red there. And that will be all complete. So it's just a matter of sewing that same stitch that we've been doing. I've hidden my knot in between the layers there so that that won't be seen. And remember when you're sewing this one, we want to be keeping the other side, which will be visible when we open up that flap to pop our little scissors inside. We want to keep our stitch nice and pretty on this side as well. So make sure that when you're going through that you're going through those layers nice and straight. Make sure that you're not going through on an angle like this because then you'll be missing the stitch on the other side. So just keep it all nice and even and just keep checking as you go. And it's really important to rotate your work when you're blanket stitching or even blanket appliqueing so that your stitches radiate outwards from every direction. If you don't rotate your work as you go, you'll find you'll get a lean to your stitches as you go around. Um, and it's way more pleasing to the eye to have them all just coming out straight from where you're working. So you can see, I'm just gonna continue with those stitches, 
right the way around changing my colors as I need to. So there we go that has all of my stitching done and completed my little scissor keep. So just tucked away in there I'm actually going to keep my little forceps in there. So I've got my two little pairs of forceps in there they tuck in there nicely. What a fabulous gift and I did have an idea that of course they would make a great gift for a hairdresser friend and they're so quick to make you could store them up before Christmas couldn't you and also wouldn't they be great with a little collection of little cosmetic brushes in there tucked away in there all those pretty colors so perfect for a little tiny makeup case Whatever you're going to put in there, I hope you've really had fun with it. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed this one today. Really quick and easy little project. I'm sure that I'm going to see so many different flavours coming through in your lovely pictures that you send to me. Please send me lots of different colours and designs in this one. I'm really looking forward to seeing these. And I get a lot of people ask me if they can make my uh, product from my patterns up to sell and absolutely yes you can um, the only thing you can't do is you can't sell the pattern itself you can make as much product as you like and uh, sell them in your whether you're selling in an online store or whether you're selling at local markets I wish you every success it's my little way of paying it forward to you all so everybody keep being creative Everybody stay safe and most of all, all of those lovely things that come to you in your day, make sure that you share them and pay them forward. Till next time, it's Huru from me.